this morning. We are so privileged to have the senior pastor of Global Impact Church. Let's welcome to our soul of David, Pastor Yemi Davis. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let's give God praise for his goodness. He's got times and seasons in his hands. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God. To call me your own. You've got time. You've got time. Lift your voice. See your own. You called for life. You called for life. Out of darkness. You don't need a man to lead a God. transformation. Thank you, Lord, for fullness of joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together for Jesus. I want to celebrate uh, Pastor Shala and Pastor Abigail. I met Pastor Abigail before I even met Pastor Shala. It's amazing. Uh, thank you so much for being there for the body of Christ. This is just the beginning. Greater things are ahead. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Shala and Pastor Abigail. Amen. And Pastor Godman, thank you for blessing us. I have picked uh, what I will preach tomorrow morning. It's a Thanksgiving service, so I'm going to, so in case you notice, I'm scooping out. We've been friends for years. I mean, the kind of people you work with matters a lot. We met on camp. I was in Futa, I was in Ife, and they were preaching for each other. And over 25 years now, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And then for you making it to this conference, put your hands together for yourself. Let it be loud enough. Amen. I bring greetings from my wife, Abimbola Davids. We have four daughters. Yes. I'm excited. I'm blessed amongst women. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I told Pastor, Pastor Goodman has two daughters. So uh, Pastor Balaji has um, three sons. So I was applying, and I told him $5, 5 million dollars instrumental payment is the down payment. Please put your hands together for Jesus as you take your seat. The Bible is a manual, a life manual. For every gadget you buy, a manual f uh, f comes with the gadget. The manual helps you to maximize the gadget. To buy a phone, a speaker, keyboards, television, the manual helps you to utilize the device effectively. The Bible, it's life manual. You are like the device, and God now sent the manual after you. So you are able to maximize destiny when you follow the manual. The moment your life goes out of the flow of the manual, the joy begins to diminish. So when we talk about fullness of joy, a lot has to do with alignment with the word, alignment with the principles. 
If you run your marriage, contrary to what the manual says, there can be joy. If you run your academics or any part of your life, outside the manual, the device will malfunction. The device will not have fullness of joy. And as a practical Christian, I, I want to you know, speak to restoration this morning. God's mercy brings restoration. Restoration brings fullness of joy. Many times as we run the life of a believer, we tend to miss out on things. And I've seen people literally lose years, seasons, opportunities, money, and there is a kind of setback. I mean, you can be in 2022, and you know that like, the life you are living is 1992 or 2012. There is this inner dissatisfaction that I'm not on the right page. I should be more than this. My ministry, maybe your marriage, your finances ought to be more than this. That inner dissatisfaction shows there is a need for restoration. That's why I love Joel chapter 2, I think verse 25. It says, I will restore to you the years. That means people can literally miss out on years of their lives. Five years can be stolen by Satan. Three years, something just happens, either a direct attack of the enemy or we make certain mistakes. And as Pastor Goldman said, the enemy comes in and, you know, to steal, you know, and then you find that this career, this business, this life is behind schedule. I should be in chapter five of destiny, but it looks like I'm in chapter three, something it's not okay. That was what happened to the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, where he just woke up one day and said, wow, I should be in chapter 5. No more joy. No more celebration. I'm in chapter 2. I will arise. I will get my joy back. You will get your joy back today. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. If you have lost anything the last five, seven years, I prophesy a season of restoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you have missed, maritally, financially, career-wise, I release grace for restoration in the name of Jesus. When restoration comes, nobody can stop your joy. There is celebration. There is, I mean, there's a couple in our church, they've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb, and, you know, been praying for years. And then last year, just before we got into last year, we had certain things we were doing in church as a project. And then we thought we would have sorted it out before the pandemic. We didn't even know the pandemic was going to show up in 2020. So in 2019, we were set. And then, bam, the pandemic showed up. And I was concerned that, Lord, see, lockdown, how do we do this? This is a lot of money. I said, Lord, I, I need a word from you. And he said, okay, I, I needed to go to Isaiah 54. When I had Isaiah 54 in my spirit, I, I said, a lie. Because I know Isaiah 54. That can be the word. I'm looking for something powerful. I've read it severally. So I kept praying, praying, and God said, I said go to Isaiah 54. Okay, sir. So I went back. Can we, say, can we read it together? <laughs> Break forth into singing and? Okay. Now that is not be out time. For more. For more, for more. So I said, so Lord, what is it? He said, the answer to your next season is the very first word. I said, well, what, see, I'm ready to fast for 40 days. I'm ready to pray more. This project is humongous. We need a lot of, you know, steps to take. He said, sing, oh barren, not all fruitful. It is the singing that changes the seasons. <laughs> And that was what Pastor Goma was saying. I mean, I argued with God. My mind troubled me. I was ready to pray. He said, sing. Let the church sing. And we started singing. But we started for my family. My wife, you know, uh, the children. Uh, thank God for uh, Bukola Bekis, Tim Godfrey, and all the you know, on YouTube. And we'll be dancing and be dancing. So we did 21 days of praising God. As a church, one hour each day, praising God, praising God. At the end of the singing, 
heavens broke loose. I pray that as you express fullness of joy, God will break loose on your life. Yeah. We needed some money to do a part of the project. A man called and said, Pastor, I, I, are, you, are you around? I, I said, that was a Saturday night. I, I, I don't like talking too much on Saturday night because of Sunday morning, but I just picked his call. He said, Pastor, are, are you... Are you can I, can I see you on Monday? I said, what's the problem? He said, I was about to buy a property in Abuja. And the Holy Spirit said, I should not buy that. I should give the money to the project. I said, what did you say? <laughs> say it again. He said, yes, that the Holy Spirit has been troubling me. <laughs> I said, I'm around on Monday. <laughs> I'm around on Monday. If I have to come through Baghdad, I'm around on Monday. So early morning, around 9 a.m., he went to the bank. He was in another company. I think he just paid them some monies. And he came with tens of thousands of dollars cash and brought it to the, to the house. I said, you mean this? He said, yes, God said it. I should do it. Okay. And I prayed with him. As I heard the money when he left, I said, Lord, I will sing. <laughs> I will sing. <laughs> eh? Last year, we, sang, we are still singing. <laughs> I still sang yesterday at 1 a.m. Tell your neighbor you will sing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Singing. The couple in our church trusting God for the fruit of the womb for like five years. Triplets. She's pregnant now with triplets. Singing converts barrenness into fruitfulness. All the guys in the house, I know you want breakthroughs in your business. You have to learn to sing. You have to learn to dance by yourself. Of course, when we sing, God inhabits the praises of his people. And when God comes down, Satan can't stand. Fruitfulness cannot come down and barrenness remain. Light cannot come down and darkness remain. Breakthrough cannot come down and breakdown remains. So you invite God into the party. He inhabits the praises. That is his habitation, his residence. So you create that residence for him in your office, in your car, in your home. Don't turn your home into a graveyard. Always be grateful. I mean, my friend knows me. He, you can't walk around me, I'm, I'm sorrowful. Never. If you have lost anything, it's the reason you've not lost everything. I laugh at myself. There was a time they stole a keyboard in church. Two keyboards, one night. <laughs> you are in the ministry too. <laughs> now listen, so I was bothered. How can we just, how can somebody come and rap your keyboards <laughs> in the church? And the listener said, call your friend. So I called as a God man. I said, God man, see this is troubling me oh, that they stole a keyboard. They said, ah, they stole their own keyboard, their own mixer. Money on the house show. You failed an exam, go and laugh at the result. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. F9? Yeah. Only me? Yeah. How great thou art! Yeah. How great thou art! Yeah. You can't even enjoy total health with, with sorrow in your heart. They stole your car. Go and thank him for having something stealable. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you, there are some people's car. If they park it outside, open the bonnet and the doors, the thief will not even touch it. If I ask you what's to be stolen from and to be the thief, the gap is very wide. Covenant people don't sorrow over things. The Holy Spirit said, look at Jacob. He, had, he thought that, that, that Joseph was dead. And you can imagine, he thought he was dead. Every year, Jacob will be, you know, anniversary of oh, my son died two years ago. My son, and the guy wasn't dead. God was building him somewhere. And after some years, the resurrected Joseph showed up. And the Holy Ghost said, covenant people don't lose anything. 
No, no, it's going to come back many fold. Many fold. And God said to me, do you know Jacob was just sorrowing for nothing? You have just been blessing God. Lord, my future is bright. I know you always have my back. Just stand. You could have been doing that for all those years. If you have lost anything, it's the reason you've not lost everything. I know you are not where you want to be, but you are not where you used to be. Always thank God for the shift. Glory to God. You thank him for his finger. You see his hand. Hallelujah. Derek Prince says, when there's a challenge in your life and you want to pray about it, you must begin with thanksgiving. And that's the scriptures. Oh, the marriage is not in shape. Finances are down. You don't ever go to God and say, Lord, my finances. No, thank him for the money you spent before. He said, let everything that has breath, do what? That you can breathe. You thank him for the breath, he adds color to the life. God cannot survive a joyless environment. Murmuring and complaining will keep us in stagnation. There are two insects that murmur a lot. I don't know how close you are to them. The first one is mosquitoes. When they come around you, what do you do? And the other one, you know them, flies. I'm grateful, grateful. For my toes, I'm grateful. For the privilege of ministry, election of grace, I'm grateful. Very grateful. I had hepatitis, hepatitis B or C in secondary school, and I had typhoid. I failed work the first time because I couldn't attend some classes. I was a very good student. But because of the sickness, I missed some exams. What if I died at that time? <laughs> what if? If you can think, you can thank. Yeah. And if you are thankful, your tank will always be full. Yeah. <laughs> always be grateful. Find reasons to dance. I have them. 45 minutes, 30 minutes. Just put it on. You just be dancing. Especially the ones that sing about mercy. Oh, yeah. no. His mercy, oh, I'm the fourth born out of five. Fourth son out of five. And he picked me out of the five. Why? What election took place? Election of grace. All the melancholies in the house, don't blow your head with problems. They said the world is going to fall. It's only on your own head it's going to fall. Let it fall now. 80% of the things you are worried about never happens. And then you now sit down kakoikikale, you know? You just, you just, you know, kakoi, you know kako? What's that in Yoruba? Do you know what, I mean, in English, what is that? Kakoikikale, you know? You, 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 kako guoguole. <laughs> and then, and then some of you like when they ask you what's wrong with you. It's like romancing the pain. Stop it. That you see somebody laughing or somebody don't have their own challenges. We cannot turn you to an idol. Somebody say restoration. restoration. How do I get restoration? The first thing is I must realize that something was stolen from the store. The enemy steals in a way that people will not know so they can remain low. But the prodigal son said, What? How many of my father's hired servants have enough food to eat and I, I, I am begging? No, this is not right. Realization stirs up your hunger for restoration. And more than this, God has destined me to be fruitful. God has called me to have an impact, great impact in my generation. You must realize, and now when you realize, that leads to a reaction. Without spiritual violence, you cannot get the best out of your Christian work. Many of us are too gentle for the breakthroughs we are looking for. Spiritual violence. <laughs> ah, 
spiritual. You must be tenacious. Many of the people that receive miracles from scriptures, they, 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 Jesus did not go to meet them. They went to meet Jesus. Check it out. A man and his friends was bedridden. They came and they, they, they got to the place and they said, uh, there's no space in the auditorium. Some of us will just say, okay, when is the next crusade? When is the next meeting? Those who do that don't get breakthroughs. They say there's no space. There's no space, Abi. There's no space. There's no space. Next thing, the roof of the man's house. Opened it. There's space now. The woman with the issue of blood, she wriggled in the, in the midst of the crowd. I must be here today. Tell your neighbor I'll be restored today. You got to be tenacious. All this doing it as convenient will not make it work. She wriggled behind and said, if I can touch the arm of his garment, or is it blind Bartimaeus that you know sitting with other blind men and decided I must be healed? I hear of a Jesus healing people, and then he heard that Jesus was passing by. He just heard. He shouted, "Son of David, have mercy!" And then the protocol people came. Crowd control people came. Shh. It's solemn assembly. We don't make noise here. And many of us would have stopped there. Oh, I should not make noise. Okay, okay. So when, when is he passing this place again? No. Scripture says, <laughs> I'm sure in his heart he thought, you will tell me who is blind inside me and you. I should keep quiet. And then he shouted, yeah, the more. Son of David, have mercy. And then Jesus stood still. And I asked myself, what if he didn't do the second shout? Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. The one that amazes me is that woman whose daughter was almost dying. If you, if you put it on today's template, ah, Twitter will jam. How can Rabbi tell you that we don't give the children's bread to dogs? Many of us will talk about, what is the meaning of this? This is preposterous. It's chauvinistic. It's a hater of women. Can you imagine? Just because of miracles, he's saying they don't give it to dogs. I me, mean, I'm a dog. Hey, where we talk miracle? That is why the people that stand out in their generations are very few. She said to Jesus, even the dogs eat the crumbs. Jesus said, Mugbe. What did you say? I've never heard it before. He said, yes, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And the terminal ailment was healed. Realization, reaction. Like, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly. Father, I don't want this anymore. I'm more than this. And Lord, in case you, you don't know, I won't take no for an answer. So we need together. Those kind of prayer don't pass secretary. It's just bum. In God's presence. Realization, reaction. And then that's what I call retracing. When you are dealing with a situation that has lingered. Perhaps you've had this before. Mercy is a function of specifics. Sometimes... The thing you are looking for, we need certain things to be corrected. Proverbs 26 verse 2. This was a major breakthrough for me many years ago. That when there is stagnation, when there is stealing from the enemy, I need to know where the door opened. Sometimes we just keep praying, oh God, oh God, but the door is still open. So God Say, look, close this door. But how would I even close the door when I don't even know where the door opened? So it looks like you are praying and praying and nothing is happening. The prodigal son was able to locate where the problem started from. It was when I left. My father is not the devil. That is, that is specific. This mercy is tied to me sorting that out. That's why I said, I will arise and what? And if you notice, as he went back, mercy met up with him. And then joy, fullness of joy, because there was celebration. Proverbs 26, 2, please. I hope that is yes. It says, as the bird, by wandering, 
as a swallow by flying, so they what? How do you pronounce that place? Glory to God. Ma'am, you, you speak English. Right? Curse, right. See, you are curse. How do you pronounce the second one? Cause. So the curse, causeless, shall not come. That is, if there is stagnation, lingering for years, 10 years, 15 years, something caused it. Know that as a principle. That you don't know the C-A-U-S-E does not mean something did not C-A-U-S-E it. So in retracing is to pray, Lord, where did I miss it? What opened this gap? <laughs> oh, Second Samuel chapter 21. Glory to God. If you are still here, say amen. amen. Second Samuel 21 from verse 1. This is pre, uh, scriptural technicalities. The devil hides the C-A-U-S-E a lot. So that people can keep struggling and fighting what they should not fight. While the door is open. Do you know that if the prodigal son prayed where he was and prayed, nothing will happen? For his own restoration, he needed to reconcile. The way he left was wrong. But he got it right. And Massy met him fast. He says, look at this story. Glory to God. That time is correct, right? Good. Then there was a famine in the days of David. How many years? Yeah. Three years famine. Financial stagnation. For three years. When you notice anything lingering for a while, you need to pray. Lord, what must I do? Or where have I missed it? For three years, year after year, and then David did what? Inquired. That is how you get that joy oh, back fully. Inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered. This answer troubled me. You can never think it in your mind. I would have thought it was climate change. Yes. And then you start praying. Father, change the climate, let there be rainfall. But that's not the problem. That's not the C-A-U-S-E. He said, it is for Saul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites. Verse 2, glory to God. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn to them during Joshua's time, and Saul sought to slay them in his zeal. So the children of Israel and Judah, he killed them. And that became breaking of a vow. And then the harvest of it came at the time of David's reign. Next verse, verse 3, Mambrade. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? I want my joy back. What do you want, guys? We are tired of this famine. And where shall I make the atonement that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Verse 4, glory to God. And the Gibeonites said to him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul nor of his house, neither for us shall thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, okay, what do you really want? Verse 5. And they answered the king, the man that consumed us and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel. Verse 6. Let, let seven men of his sons be delivered to us and we will hang them up unto the Lord. In Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will do it. Can your mind ever think this is the problem? Or when Jonah was in the boat and then the ship was raging, your mind will believe it's the climate. So everybody will gather as prayer warriors. We bind the, the storm. Anytime you are binding and losing and it looks like it's not responding, switch over to inquiries. The problem of that storm is Jonah. It's not the climate. A wrong staff. Wrong leg, wrong leg. People carry things, oh. Some are catalysts to visions. And some, ah, yeah, yeah. Wrong person. And Jonah was sleeping. And they called him. Oh, God, we are all praying. You are sleeping. Come now, come. And then they did their lots as they did in those days. And it fell on Jonah. Oh, God. What did you do? What did you do to you? What did you do to us? Jonah said, eh, God sent me to Ikeja. But I don't like Ikeja. I like Leki. So I ran away. Eh. But why did you do that? Then I asked him, what should we do? 
He said, throw me out. No, they said we cannot throw him out. May sentiments not kill your joy. Oh. <laughs> sentiment. Uh, it's not right. How can we throw a human being outside the, the ship? How can I sack that person? It's my cousin. It's my brother-in-law. It's unfair. Mm. As scripture says, they tried to move on and the storm got worse. And then they gidded him. Oh my God. Is that correct? It's correct. Gidded. That's a derivative from Yoruba language. They gidded him and threw him out. Go and read it. Go and read it. As he landed in the water, the storm ceased. But before then, they had thrown out their luggage, waste of energy, waste of perfume, waste of clothing, because that is not the C A U S E. What must I do to be saved? It's better than, Lord, save me. Oh, please save me. What must I do, Lord, to turn this thing around? It's better than just shouting. Mercy is linked to divine instructions. Oh, wine has finished in this party. The joy, wine represents joy. The joy has finished. So what do we do? Oh, Jesus is in the house. How do we get another joy? Whatever he tells you to do, that instruction replenished the joy and the joy multiplied. Realization, reaction, retracing. That is your praying, prayer of inquiries so that you can hit it right. Why is my marriage like this? You ask him if you are, have a sorrowful marriage. And it's lingering. No joy in the house. Why is my marriage like this? And the Holy Ghost will tell you. If it is a spiritual attack, he will let you know. And then you break Satan's head. If it is your attitude, your pastor will preach it the next morning. Or on TV. Or you hear that your anger is too much. That any small thing, you overreact. And the Holy Ghost will say to you, how should you use hammer to kill mosquito? Yes, there's mosquito. Yes, your husband is wrong or your wife is wrong. But you can't be using hammer to kill mosquito. You destroy more than you're trying to. And anger rests in the bosom of fools. My son, you're not a fool. Yes, I'm not a fool. I serve you the only wise God. Oh, you're a lady in the house. Every small thing you are moody. Moody Institute. Moody. <laughs> Any small thing, just what is it again? There is always something, and you have become addicted to pity. I break that over your life in Jesus' name. They enter two bedroom, you are not happy. They enter one dupe like you don't like the roof. Kilo fair. What do you want? Or why is this business like this? And God will tell you, you are not handling the capital where you are not the capital. You are an employee in this business. Fix your salary. Structure this thing better. Look, there are answers. So see what God said to David. It's not you that caused the problem. It's Saul. But you swore to them. So they need to resolve that. If not, the family will continue. I pray that this first half, there will be revelations. Concerning your life, your families, that we turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ. So after you have retraced and God begins to correct you at times or instruct you, it will lead to repentance or what we call restitution. Sometimes there are things you need to just work on. There was a man, that uh, I think John G. Lake, they had a prayer line. I think I mentioned that in this ministry the last time I preached. There was a healing line. In those days, they have healing meetings for like two weeks. So this guy, when they are praying for him, the anointing does not just flow. And as John Gillick was praying, 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 he said he kept hearing $5,000. $5,000. So they pulled the man aside. Now, sir, this cancer, this problem. Um, when I'm praying, the anointing is always like, you know, short-circuiting. But I'm hearing $5,000. He said something about that. The man said, he was thinking and thinking. He said, the only one he can remember is this. He had a business with a friend. And then the friend died. 
So the wife now took over the husband's place. After a while, the wife said, I can't do this business. I'm tired. Sell everything. Let's just share. So he went to do all the processes. He said he, said he kept $5,000 from her, but she didn't know. And that's the only thing she, she can remember. They said, okay, no problem. Do you have $5,000 with you in your account? In those days, he said, yes, said, go, go. This meeting still continuing anyway. Go and post it to her. Apologize, and then come back. The guy went. We said, when he came back and he stood on the healing line, he said, before hand even entered his head, he fell down flat, and terminal sickness disappeared. Curse, curseless, shall not come. Something God will reveal to you. It could be how you exited your former relationship that truncated your getting married. And God would perhaps ask you at times, can you resolve that? Close that door properly so I can open this new door for you. You will understand your own in Jesus' name. Yeah. So after we do that, repentance, restitution, and then God's restoration just begins to bellow on us. I pray that the year will be a year of fullness of joy, a year of restoration of lost seasons. Now, when restoration now shows up, we need to recognize it. Many times God has answered prayers, but people didn't even know that God has answered. Ah, I never knew that. I never knew that. This conference is holding now. There are some people living around this place that saw the banner. The thing is praying to God about every night. Oh God, do this. The answer is being shared here. But he looked at the banner. Household of David, all this church itself. And the thing is disturbing God about is across the street. And if he's seated here now, one statement from Joshua Selman, one statement from one, uh, uh, one, day, one, state, one statement, one statement will resolve the 30 days of fasting. But he's just there. He can't recognize that the answer is here. Anytime you pray about a thing and it's lingering, hear me, most likely the answer showed up, but you did not recognize it. Naaman, a Syrian general, accomplished military um, career, had money, but he had a problem called leprosy. And they told him there's a prophet in Samaria that, will, that would sort it out. He was excited, like many of us are excited when we come to prayer meetings, God will do a miracle. So he was excited. He went with the, with, you know, with the, with the retinue of our soldiers and the, you know, the paraphernalia and all those things. And then he landed in front of the house of the prophet. And then he was waiting to be called next. And then the peer of the prophet came up, called Gehazi. Hello, sir. My master said, you should go and wash yourself in River Unilag seven times and you shall be made whole. <laughs> Naaman got angry with what he has been asking for for years because it did not look like what he thought it should be. We are permitted to pray. We are not permitted to know how God will answer or to determine how God will answer. The mistake we make is when you are praying for healing, you believe that when you come to church on Sunday morning, Pastor Shola will mention my name specifically. There's a lady there. Blue, white, blue. Your number is 08 And then you will receive your healing. And then Pastor Shola comes on Sunday morning in the midst of the worship. Oh, if there's anybody here that needs healing, just put your hand there. You are thinking, I know that can be my own. My almost is very specific. And yet God wants to heal you. Ability to wreck one of our ladies in church was disturbing. I want to get married. I want to get she was crying. Cell leader. The assistant cell leader likes her. Ah. Engineer. I said, Are you blind? She, she just keeps she kept seeing him, assistant cell leader. There are people that are in this church that your husband is in the same ocean unit. Or this, and then you just see him as a fellow usher. We are fellow ushers. Bola and Kola, we are fellow ushers. And then Bola will be telling Kola the problem of guys in the office. And Kola will be advising Bola. 
And Kola is the husband. And Bola is the serving God every year. Father, my man should come. Oh Lord, give me three billion dollars this year. Mendo Sata, I see, I see money. Oh Gabaya. And then the client shows up on Monday morning to do business. And you calculated everything. The profit will be $350. No. You are not the one we are looking for. And then you maltreat him or her. Unknown to you, the $350 connects the $1,000. The $1,000 speaks of you in the right place, connects you to the $1 million. But you spoil the track, you spoil the train. Recognizing, maybe in the beautiful worship team here, husbands and wives are here. I was on campus now, if uh, and I was dating somebody in London. It's not bad, but the relationship was not working. I will send a letter from Ife to London, beginning of semester. The reply will come back, end of semester, which is okay. But when I now hold the reply, it was the one I sent. Do you understand? The one I sent came back. When they go to the person's house, they didn't meet her for three days. Ah! Years upon years. And there was a worship leader in the church. Bimbo was there. Oh. Was there. Serving. Serving. Until God opened my eyes. He had to speak to me. He said, that is your wife. Eh? I said, you, was, you, you came visa. I said, Lord, hey, oh. Because I held on to that relationship because of you came visa. It was during a bachelor's regime. I grew up in a barrack setting. I'm old of it. We didn't have money. I take coke in those days for three days, one week. Because you don't know the next time you take the next one. So when they give us coke, you take small and put it in the fridge. Just a sip. It must not finish. It must not finish. And if your elder brother goes to the kitchen, you just stand behind him. I'm out for coke. Do not touch. And then my elder brother will be threatening me. I will report what you did uh, two days ago. Okay. Take small. <laughs> so, so you are now dating someone that is a UK citizen. This is heaven. I, I must marry her, oh, Father. What is UK now? Touch your eyes. Say, Father, the answers, the breakthroughs that you have supplied in answer to my prayers, my supplications, my fastings, help me to recognize it. Pray in the Holy Ghost for a few seconds. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Help me. Help me to recognize it. My blindness. There are answers already. Breakthroughs. They are too close at times. Baker Sata. Heal my deafness. Heal my blindness. The breakthroughs you have supplied. The answers you have supplied. Father, help me to recognize it. The answer to my questions. Man de casa. Begin to give thanks to God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. For the few minutes I have, I want to mention something that will help you live in joy. Champions think of the future. Losers only live for the present. Even God thinks in terms of generations. You find him when he was blessing Abraham, he will say, Abraham and his seed. 
He was always investing in what will help the future. I think it's in Genesis 8.22. As long as the earth remained, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. It is called the law of eventuality. Today is the harvest of yesterday. Take it or leave it. Tomorrow is the harvest of the seeds we sow today. Thank God he taught me this. You can shadow great experiences tomorrow by sowing the seeds today. Many of our parents, with all honor, are experiencing certain heartaches by the seeds of the past. As long as they are three minutes. The things you are doing today will multiply and create 2027. The question is, what are you doing today? Everything you do to be a blessing to God's kingdom or another person is a seed. To give them joy. And anything you do to cause hurt or harm to another person is a seed. Awaiting harvest. Only mercy can change the equation. Jacob lied to collect the blessings from his father. His father-in-law cheated him for 14 years and lied to him. The future is actually in our hands. You are a walking warehouse of seeds. Diligence is a seed. Loyalty is a seed. Words are seeds. Honoring your parents are seeds. My father was 85 two weeks ago. We did something for him. I gave him some things. And he said, you have made me happy. What will make you happy in your time? Your children will be able to do it for you. That is settling certain and what I did to him is what he likes. Me, what I like is for the children to buy me jets. I said what will make you happy. Your children will be able to do it for you. Amen. Honor your pastor. Honor is a seed. Honor the Holy Spirit. When they are doing praise and worship in church, don't be twin gum and be talking. Honor is a seed. I need like four people on upstage, please. Like four, just to help me. Um, four people that can just, am I permitted? Just, yeah, come, come, please. Just four. I'm sorry to trouble you. Ah, Pastor, no, fire is coming. Just wait. On. It's okay, sir. <laughs> Okay, maybe you can join them. Now listen, I've been pastoring for a while. Please face the people. Let's say this is your various parts of life. This is your health, marriage, finances, career. Please look at the people, right? The seeds for your, what's your answer? Marriage. Is it marriage? Finance. Finance. The seed for your finance does not mean you are sowing the right seeds in your health. Many people make that mistake. For career, sees down a man diligent in his what? He shall stop. That is the seed for career progress. If he's diligent in his business and he's sowing the wrong seeds in his health, he might die before his time. So many people always assume because I'm reaping a harvest on this side of my life, I am okay. You can be doing well as an engineer and be a foolish husband. Diligence at work is not equal to love your wife as Christ loved the church. So the devil now tries to capitalize on the area where you have not been sowing the right seeds to destroy the others. We must be holistic in our approach to our covenant work. Yes, I am diligent at work, but I need to pay attention to my wife and my children. If not, 
God forbid, one of the children might spoil the entire career of 40 years in the future. Oh, I'm diligent at work and they're promoting me. I'm a senior manager, but I need somebody to talk to me about my health. The body God gave you to walk this life. Do your medicals. It's not a sin. I do that every year. Especially if I'm about 40. I've seen great people in career, but wrong seeds in their health. That one now cut short the career pathway. It's foolish. Eat properly. I, I was with the dentist some, days, some weeks ago, and they, they, they did the x-ray of my jaw. And I saw the gum almost disappearing. I said, ah, what is this? He said, ah, what kind of brush do you use, sir? I said, hard brush. <laughs> you can't be eating barbecue. Hard brush. They said, no, 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 no. I didn't know. My thinking is the harder the brush, the cleaner. <laughs> For the first time, they said, no, 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 sir. That's why the gum is going like that. And the way you use your toothpick, kiki, kiki, you are creating holes. I didn't know. I didn't know. He said, sir, from now, start using soft brush. brush. I said, soft. Do you see the things I'm eating? He said, that, that, that's just do it like this. Your pastor can't teach you that. Sometimes I wonder how we pastors can even be telling people whether to be vaccinated or not, just for your thought. It's not your field. Can you carry your car to your pastor? Look at it. Will it work? <laughs> Many have died foolishly because of wrong application of seeds. Doing well in business, eating wrongly. There are some things that are not good for your own body. Go and ask on time. Before they now tell you that if you had stopped this thing 10 years ago, it wouldn't be like this. I'm telling you. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. I know you are the senior man at work. Pay attention to your children. <laughs> that child of six years will soon be 16. If you don't sow the right seeds at six, when he's 16, you have lost the person. Hmm. Our first daughter is 18 now. I don't even know how she became 18. I'm still wondering, ah, when did we born you? 18. 18. And she said, Daddy, I'm going to be 18. When she was 17, I'm going to be 18. Daddy, I'm an adult. I said, where? <laughs> she said, Daddy, I can drive myself. I can um, do elections. I can vote. And it just dawned on me that, what? She's free in court to make her decisions. But the question is, how has the relationship been? I know you are busy. Play with those children. You hardly play with a teenager that you've not been playing with before. Say, yeah. yeah. When they are five now, seven, they'll be coming to you. Leave me, I'm, I'm working. Hey. When they is 17, you will not come. Say, no, I'm busy, daddy. <laughs> so it's better to develop it now. They are seeds. God cannot even break it himself. <laughs> Take your vital signs. Your health, marriage, parenting. I said to people, these kids will marry and go. If you are not friends with your spouse, you'll be looking at each other and age before your time. They, will, they are just on a project. They will go. They will marry. Now, if there's no friendship between you and your wife, you will not be able to relate when they are gone. That's why some women will carry their luggage and be disturbing the children. All in the name of taking care of a uh, grandchild. You now say for six months. Be stopping another person's marriage. Did you see what your husband did last week? Because you are there, that you are seeing what you should not see. You go for two, three weeks and come and meet your husband. If you have been friends, he that had friends must show himself friendly. So I play with my wife at home. We play Scrabble. We watch Barcelona. When they beat Barcelona, she comforts me. We argue, we fight. But when we get to worship, we can't be fighting and worship, so we said to. But we are friends. I enjoy the friendship. And I know that the Holy Ghost will help us. Be a friend. Don't become an executive husband. Hello. <laughs> Where's my food? <laughs> or, or, or you are a pastor, you know, or a leader in the church. Everything is... Where's daddy? That is praying. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Rise up 
on your feet. Give him praise. The seeds of today are uh, the harvest of tomorrow. You can build tomorrow intentionally. If you are here and you know that certain seeds have not been okay and the harvest are staring you in the face, I said in my note, pain in any area of our lives is a revelation of the kind of seeds that we have been sowing in that area. Attend to it. Pain is a friend showing you that ah, I've not been attending to this thing. I need to attend. And you declare emergency on it and ask God for mercy and ask him for wisdom on how to go about it. But you work on it so that the fullness of the harvest does not pull down the other aspects of our lives. Our joy will not be truncated in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and bless him. Lift your hands and bless him. Thank you. Lord, I receive wisdom. Mendo Kosalada. Ask God for mercy. Maybe on your business, you've not been diligent at work. You've been lazy. And your career is truncated. I mean, it's, it's plummeting. All your spiritual life is just dormant. You don't pray. You don't do anything. To shout amen. You don't shout amen. Pray for mercy. Receive mercy. Give me new beginnings, my father. Mercy brings restoration. Restoration brings fullness of joy. Hallelujah. So shall it be. I release grace for revelations in the next seven days. Things that should be revealed should be revealed. Things that we need to know, we will know. Lord, let your mercy prevail over judgment. Rescue us from areas we have not been too good in the name of Jesus. Let your mercy bring restoration. Let your restoration restore our joy. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah.